To finance our recurrent spending needs, I first announced in Budget 2018 that we will need to raise the GST rates sometime from 2021 to 2025. As announced in the Unity Budget in February 2020, in view of economic conditions then, the GST rate increase would not take effect in 2021. This remains our plan. However, we will not be able to put out the increase for too long. We have to make the move sometime during 2022 to 2025, and sooner rather than later, subject to the economic outlook. Without the GST rate increase, we will not be able to meet our rising recurrent needs, in particular healthcare spending. While we are fortunate to be able to tap on our reserves to respond to the COVID-19 crisis, it is not tenable for the government to run persistent budget deficits outside periods of crisis. No finance minister likes to talk about tax increases, certainly not when the pandemic is still raging around the world. But we do this because we plan for the long term and do not shy away from explaining to fellow citizens why we need to make tough but necessary decisions to ensure that we have enough to provide for our nation's future. Let me reiterate my commitment to all that the government will ensure that our overall taxes and transfer system remains fair and progressive. GST on publicly subsidised education and healthcare will continue to be fully absorbed. And to help cushion the impact when the GST rate is raised, we have set aside $6 billion for an assurance package. This will effectively delay the effect of the GST rate increase for the majority of Singaporean households by at least five years. For lower-income Singaporeans, the offset will be even higher, with those living in one- to three-room HDB flats receiving about 10 years' worth of additional GST expenses incurred. Over and above the transitional support, we already have the permanent GST voucher scheme to defray GST expenses for lower- and middle-income households. This is a permanent feature of our system and will be enhanced when the GST rate increase takes place. Through this scheme, we are able to provide targeted support for those who need help most. Based on past collections, foreigners residing in Singapore, tourists and the top 20% of resident households are estimated to account for over 60% of the net GST borne by households and individuals. This is after taking into account the GST voucher scheme and the GST refunded under the tourist refund scheme for goods bought locally for consumption abroad. If you consider our entire system of taxes and benefits, it is a progressive one. <clears throat> In 2020, the top 20% of Singaporean households paid 56% of the taxes and received 11% of the benefits whereas the bottom 20% paid 9% of the taxes and received 27% of the benefits. At the same time, our tax system must remain resilient to withstand shocks. We are mindful of international tax developments and the downside risk to our revenues. There are ongoing discussions to revise international tax rules under the base erosion and profit sh shifting or BEPS 2.0 project. These proposals will adversely impact our corporate income tax revenues. As I've mentioned in this House previously, we are actively involved in these talks. If and when international tax rules are changed, we will consider if adjustments are required to our corporate tax system accordingly in consultation with the industry. One aspect of a fair and resilient tax system is ensuring a level playing field for our local businesses vis-à-vis -vis their overseas counterparts. This is especially relevant as e-commerce for sales of goods and services is growing. In Budget 2018, I announced the extension of GST to imported services from 1st January 2020. I also shared 
that we will be reviewing international developments on how GST can apply on imported goods. Today, low-value goods imported via air or post are not subject to GST to facilitate clearance at the border. In contrast, GST is paid on such goods purchased in Singapore. Several jurisdictions, including Australia, New Zealand and the European Union, have implemented or announced plans to implement the equivalence of GST on such goods. I will, extend, I will hence extend GST to imported low-value goods with effect from 1st January 2023. This change, together with the change announced in Budget 2018, will ensure a level playing field for our local businesses to compete effectively. Overseas suppliers of goods and services will be subject to the same GST treatment as local suppliers. IRIS will continue to work with the industry to ensure smooth implementation for the change. I will also make some tax adjustments to support businesses and to maintain the competitiveness and resilience of our tax system.